our next speaker in my opinion, needs no introduction, but absolutely deserves an introduction. Mike Adams is changing the disability conversation from one that is traditionally focused on charity, vulnerable people and welfare to the one that's all about value and contribution and opportunity. And he is doing this on a phenomenal scale across the world at phenomenal speed. And I am so impressed by what Mike and his entire organization at Purple are doing. Mike has always bucked convention and actually still does. He has engaged the business community by introducing the Purple Dollar or the Purple Pound um, and is providing organizations with solutions on how to unlock that. And I'm sure Mike will talk a bit more about that during his session. Mike's been named in the Shore Power Trust list as one of the UK's top 100 most influential disabled people of 2022. He's also been awarded an OBE by our Queen um, and now King um, for his services to disability. He's going to be sharing the story of the 92% and rising. I'm really interested to hear more about that, Mike. I've heard you speak many times. We've worked together on some amazing things. And Good morning and welcome to Inspire Brighton and welcome to the Inspirathon. How are you, Mike? I'm good, thank you, Ruth, and delighted to be with you. Hi, we did a marathon last week, so I know your pain. I can feel your pain. Yes. Uh, it's, not, it's never so bad first thing in the morning, though. <laughs> no. Well, I'll be here later on as well. But uh, um, congratulations on you out on your global virtual conference last week as well. I know that you've got um, lots of amazing things going on, but also so much to share with our community. So I'll hand over the baton to you now, Mike, and I'll see you in 20 minutes. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ruth. And I think we might have some slides as well. And I'm delighted to be with you. Um, I talk about 92% and rising. And you'll be pleased to know that it's got nothing to do with interest rates. And it's got nothing opposition popularity for anyone other than the Prime Minister. What we are talking about, what I am talking about, is the number of those individuals who have a disabled relative or someone in their close network who is disabled. And I did a poll at a property conference uh, last year where they had the facility. There was 305 people in the room. I asked the question and 92 percent knew someone who was a relative or in their close network who had a disability. The, the official figures from five years ago was 50%. Um, so how? So in many ways, if you think about the International Sign for Disability, the wheelchair, it's the first thing that comes into your mind, but actually reflects 8% of the disabled population. So you need to think mental health, you need to think post-COVID and lockdowns and the exponential growth in mental health issues. You need to think about the neurodiversity uh, spectrum. Think dyslexia, think long-term health conditions, and even think cancer and those who are fully recovered from cancer. And when you think about it like that, you now might find yourself going, ah, yes, I know someone. I'm in that 92%, and maybe you're now in a statistic that 10 minutes ago you perhaps weren't. And then you translate that thinking into your organization and think about your aunt, your nephew, your cousin, your mum, your daughter, your son. And would you want that, organ that individual to be in your organization? as a member of staff or B, interact with that organization as a customer and have a worse experience simply because they had a disability. And if we go to the next slide, please. So we always have to kind of, why does disability matter? And why, as Ruth said, do we need to change the conversation, the disability conversation? And why do we have to make it real? And why do we have to resonate pe with people? Because that is the way in which it connects. And I do a, a, a LinkedIn post twice a week that tries to connect current stories or my stories to issues of disability to make that connection. And it's been fascinating this week. I've done one on motor neurone disease because of the Rugby League World Cup and Rob Burrow 
which was the uh, program that was on BBC Two, seven o'clock on Tuesday night. And I've had so many people come and say, thank you ever so much for raising the profile of motor neurone disease. And we only have to think back a few weeks with Deb James and what she did for bowel cancer in, in, in making people's behaviors and making people's understanding so much different. And just four graphics that kind of I talk about. One was trying to represent um, my initial uh, vaccine jab and my worry that it was going to be all about health and safety. It was going to be all about what we can't do and why we can't do it. I got there, I was in, I was out, I was done in eight minutes. And do you know what the br most brilliant part of that was? The young nurse looked at me and she said to me, Mr. Adams, which arm? And that sense of humor, that being able to connect made such, such a difference. And it's that kind of thing for me that inspires the ability for someone to have a joke with me use humor the bottom picture is of my pet rabbit boo we came downstairs one day he was lying on his side we took him to the vets very unlikely to survive but he did and uh we put him on medication and his shed outside we adapted it put in reasonable adjustments and he has a brilliant life and, and why do i tell you this story because boo like you 83 percent of disabled people will acquire their disability in a lifetime i i am mike i'm also called a 17 percenter now and then but 83 percent will acquire so organizations need to be inspired because their staff are dynamic and 10 15 years ago what happened someone got ill someone got a disability and they were straight out of the organization in many ways now, organizations cannot afford, cannot afford to just let talent walk out of the door. And the lightning fault, which is really good, because I've just heard a clap of thunder and a bit of lightning where I am, um, is reflects the fact that my two young daughters that are in the top page, uh, in the top picture, um, I came downstairs and one of them had the stylus in her mouth, which is what I do and how I operate my phone and was operating my phone she knew no different for her that was normal and she was able to operate the phone so we have to reorientate our minds about what is conventional what is traditional and how we think outside the box that may enable really talented people to be a part of your organization and just the top picture me holding hands with one of my twin daughters and she holding hands with her sister on their second birthday walking through a farm and i always say if you pan out and you, and the photo had uh, uh, voices you would hear all sorts of people talking and not necessarily making very nice comments and i want to create a world we need to create a world where that can happen and to be honest no one gives a, a blind bit of notice and so you know this is why disability should matter to you and to your organization and the society we live in. So if we go to the next slide, I, I just want to um, provide you with a couple of statistics, really. Um, the fact that 80% uh, of disabled people have a hidden disability, so they'll walk into your organization and you would not necessarily know. And just to, the 30% the one, by the way, is the gap in employment between disabled people and non-disabled people. There is a huge talent pool waiting to be untapped by inspired organizations who have got the innovation, the creativity, and the intent to bring in the best possible people. And I was on a European call yesterday when I was talking to the freelancing uh, market and talking about why you wouldn't attract disabled staff who are freelancers in this modern day and and the business statistics the the 274 billion purple pound but only 10 percent of businesses have got any strategy to access this this becomes a huge opportunity and globally that figure has just moved from eight trillion dollars to 13 
trillion dollars. So for organizations, and I guess most of you listening today who say you want to be inspired, this is how you can inspire and bring on board a significant population with you. Conscious of time, so let's just play a quick video on Purple Tuesday that I'll then explain. Purple Tuesday is a global social movement and the number one brand supporting organisations to improve the customer experience for disabled people and their families 365 days a year. Last year, over 5,000 businesses participated in Purple Tuesday, making over 6,000 commitments to improve accessibility and practice. Celebrations for Purple Tuesday reached number two on Twitter, had 19 million impressions on social media, received over 270 items of media coverage, including national TV, radio and print press. Notably, 15 industries were represented by a stellar group of Purple Tuesday sector partners who are leading by example in demonstrating their commitments to disability inclusion. Purple Tuesday connects businesses with their disabled customers, their disabled employees, their wider workforce, other stakeholders on an issue of growing importance. Join us and be part of the change for disabled customers across the world. Sign up today by visiting purpletuesday.co. If we move to the next slide, please. Uh, the great news is that was last year's, uh, which was fantastic, and you see the number. The even more great news is this year, it is on the 1st of November, so we are in the two-week countdown and you can be involved. And I just wanted to show you very briefly some suggestions about what organisations are doing. Web accessibility, having a digital diagnosis, the gateway to many people's organisations, training, uh, sign language, uh, getting your frontline staff to say hello and goodbye in British sign language, which makes such a different uh, difference to deaf community, quiet hours for people on the neurodiverse spectrum and hidden disabilities, which is getting real movement in terms of supporting people who in a discreet way who have a hidden disability and who need support. And the one that's really taken off this year is the six second rule, which is when someone on the neurodiverse or who has a stammer asks you a question, count to six before you answer. That enables them to process the question and provide you with an enriched answer rather than you, like I used to, jump in because we didn't like the silence and answer the question for them and almost inevitably get it wrong. So there are some of the things that you can absolutely do. Um, and then if we just go to the next slide, uh, what I call the wow slide, just to let you know what we are doing this year on the 1st of November. In the UK, you can see the picture. We will light up Piccadilly lights from eight o'clock to half past eight with 26 partners this year. And in the evening, I think I can announce today, well, it's too late now, I'm going to, we will be lighting up Canada Square in Canary Wolf to show that disability is both a commercial and a social impact issue. In the US, we're going on a road trip through Minnesota. People who know your music, Minneapolis is the home of the artist formerly known as Prince. And we have been given permission not only to go into his house, but to go into his recording studio and with a deaf school choir we will do a rendition of purple rain and that will be available for everyone to watch about 8 p.m on the 1st of november in the uae uh dubai we're lighting up the burj khalif in malaysia we're walking through the streets of kuala lumpur 
and in Pakistan we have a pioneer reception dinner and we are lighting up the Jinnah, Jinnah uh, monument that is absolutely in the heart of Karachi. And so for me to finish and for you, this is about engaging with your staff, giving them the solutions, enabling them to be inspired because inspiring workplaces come through your staff your your customers will respond accordingly and you deliver disability diversity which will be part of what you do as an organization your brand as an organization that really takes it to the next level so i will stop there Wow, thank you so much for that incredibly powerful presentation. I'm, I, wow, Ruth has, has often talked about how brilliant you are as a speaker and this is the first time I've had the fortune of hearing you. So thank you so much for that. I've certainly taken away some, some big things. Um, one, I think, I don't know, how, are you a superhero for making all of this happen in one day? I've kind of got visions of you darting all over the world and being in different places. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, but the other thing, like the main thing I've taken away is the the consistent nature of the conversation and the action that we need to take. Although things are slowly shifting, we can't stop. We've got to keep going. And it's not just conversation, it's action. It's organisations taking a stance and saying, no, we are going to commit to this and we're going to do it properly. So, um, Mike, thank you so much. Um, and I'd love to connect with you separately after this as well to find out more about what you do.